Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's so wonderful uh, to be here and to have another opportunity to learn together and to sit beside this amazing woman and to uh, hopefully learn, learn things from each other and, uh, and continue to connect and grow. So the next of the amazing tools that our sages give us in the 48 ways, last week we spoke about awe, being in an experience of life where there's just awe of everything that goes on in our bodies, in our world, in our universe, in our own uh, details of every day. There's so much amazing amazingness that's happening every moment. And to try to maximize that feeling every day of living with that awe, with that, with that presence of like, wow, every single day. The next step, the next tool in, uh, in, uh, in having a remarkable life is fear. Now, most of us, when we think of the word fear, we're like, what? Fear? Nobody likes to be afraid. Nobody likes to be terrified. Nobody, like, why are we using the word fear? So we have to define what it means. What does fear really mean? So I think, firstly, we have to each ask ourselves, what does fear mean to us? When we think of the word fear, what does it mean to us? And the second question is, why would our sages include this as a tool for the maximization of life to just be terrified sitting under our uh, uh, under our table you know biting our nails out of you know out of you know i would say trepidation or that's not fear right that's not what our sages want us to do so what is the true definition of fear and why is this an empowering tool that our sages say this is one of those 48 tools you need to maximize life and that's going to be the journey of today. So let's start by defining what is fear. What's your definition of fear? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, I think everyone today is is living uh, on some level of fear. Um, I think that uh, yeah, it's, it's scary. There's a lot going on in the world now. Uh, you know, you're scared to go to the supermarket. You're scared to go certain places because there's protests and there's this and there's that and Corona and this. So you could, that, but I don't think that's the fear that we're talking about today. Right. So <laughs> that too is fear. But what we're, we're going to get, I think at the, by the end of this, we'll, we'll uh, explain what the difference between that fear is and real fear that we're discussing. So the, there are two main fears that we talk about in Judaism. One is fear of sin. And the other is fear of heaven, right? And what does that mean to have fear? So I want to first put it into perspective. You know, we have this idea of fear of heaven. We have a, an idea, you know, in most synagogues you walk in, you'll see a sign which will say, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid, place God before you at all times, right? What, what, what's the purpose of that? What is the purpose of having God opposite me at all times? Wherever I go, I'm thinking, oh, there's a creator. He's right here in front of me. So the way I see fear and the way my rabbi has taught me about fear is fear means perspective. Fear means to have perspective. That means that if I live a life where my life is, is vacant of any meaning or purpose, where my life doesn't have a direction, right? That means I'm lacking fear. I don't realize why I'm here. I don't realize why I'm, why is, does God give me life? And to put it into perspective, you know, sometimes people may come to a conclusion, one second, that means I shouldn't be enjoying life. Does that mean, no, contrary, right? To that, right, quite the contrary. You see that the Ramchal, we learned this in uh, Monday nights at Musar Mondays, uh, the Ramchal, his amazing book called Misilat Yishirim, Path of the Just, in his first chapter, he discusses that this world was created for pleasure. This world, why, why are we here? We're here for pleasure. So one second, so how does fear fit in with pleasure? Well, there are different types of pleasure. There's pleasure that's futile pleasure, that's, that's, that's vain, that's, that's temporary. And then there's pleasure that is long 
living, it's eternal, which is real, which is which is uh, dignified, right? So yet eating is a pleasure, music is a pleasure. Uh, you know, there's many different things. Going to the beach could be pleasure, right? There are many different things that people can define as pleasure. But is that real pleasure or is that momentary pleasure? Is that fleeting pleasure? Or something that we accomplish, someone who overcomes a certain challenge. And is, for example, someone who has a bit of anger built into them as part of their character. And they're able to work and overcome that anger. That's a lifelong pleasure. Every time they think of that accomplishment, every time they don't get angry, they're filled with that joy, with that pleasure uh, of that accomplishment. So that, that, our sages would say, is a first-class pleasure, right? Having a connection with Hashem, which is the ultimate pleasure, is the first-class ple is, is first pleasure. But we have fleeting pleasures that are come and go. They come and go. They come and go. They're very, very temporary. Those are fifth class pleasures. And, you know, it's like when someone flies a plane, how would we prefer flying? Right? Do we want to fly with the baggage? You know, or do we want to fly in the, uh, in the, in, in the first class? Right? And we know that each one is a higher level of, of, uh, of luxury. Right? In life, we have different levels of pleasure. We have the, uh, you know, we have the, the real, lifelong, eternal pleasures. And then we have the momentary fleeting pleasures. So I think this, right? What Ari raised on his head and a lot, the a yamaka, you know, the word yamaka comes from the word yare malka, which means fear of God, right? So like always on top of a Jewish man, there's this like fear of God. But again, that's also what Ari is saying. It's not talking about the fear, like living like, <gasps> right? Um, that's not that fear that we're talking about. We'll explain really what, what we are talking about with fear. The word fear um, in Hebrew is yira, like Arya mentioned. And it's very similar to the word um, ra'a, to see, right? The word to see, ra'a, ra'a and yira, very, very similar. The word yira is to fear, and the word ra'a is to see. And I think that there's... Um, it's not by chance that they sound the same, sound very similar. Um, fear really, I would say maybe it's like like FOMO. You know, like I have a sister, everything. <laughs> right? You know, we all have a friend or a sibling or someone who always has like this FOMO, this fear of missing out. I would say Yura is kind of, uh, this is not like a, it's very loosely translated, but like the ultimate FOMO. Right? You don't want to live your life with this fear of missing out. Your fear of missing out on the true purpose of life. What what we're here for. What the ultimate goal is for us in this world. Right? We're not here. Like, we think, like, we have, like, this endless long life and we're just here forever. We have 120 years. Right? We, we never stop and think, like, we're only here for a temporary time. You don't know. I'm saying... Let's say like the average life is 80 years. You don't know how many of those years you're going to have. You don't know if you're going to have that in health and, and be okay. Hopefully we'll, we'll all have that or more. But we all live like this this life very um, like, like everything's fine. Everything's coming to me. And even if there's moments in our life, like I remember like, um, you know, think my mother had, had breast cancer. My father had cancer. Thank God they're both they're both okay. And there was a time that I, I went for, I started early screening and everything, and they found something, and they had to do biopsies and go for further testing. And during that time, when I wasn't sure, it was like this terrifying, terrifying time for me, right? And I lived, I lived with fear. I was scared. I didn't know. I was like, it's never going to happen. It's never, you don't even think it's going to happen to your mom or to your friend or to someone. My, my, one of my closest friends, her mother passed away yesterday. She was diagnosed young, active fun, cool, uh, an amazing lady. And, and she hasn't seen her family in months because everyone, you know, almost like ironically, everyone's not coming to see her. Like they're all social distancing because of Corona. They want to be safe. But meanwhile, you know, she was diagnosed. She went into the hospital, I think Saturday night. She was diagnosed Sunday with leukemia and Monday already she passed away. It was like a horrible thing. And you never think it's going to happen to anyone, you know, you never think it's going to, and, and please God, we should all be healthy and well. It's not like, this, um, I think 
uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say is not to fear all, like you have to live like you're afraid you're gonna die. But if we all knew that, if we really understood that the time that we have here in the world is limited, and that we're not invincible and we're not nothing, you know, then I think some of us would just live our lives differently. I don't know. Rabbi Noah Weinberg he used to say, I think I mentioned this previously. He said he he repeat this all the time. If you don't know what you're ready to die for, you haven't begun living, all right? And it's, it's it's such an amazing phrase. Like, if someone is ready to die for their family, why don't they live for their family? Every, anybody who asks, yeah, I'm ready to die for my children. I'm ready to die for my spouse. I'm ready, right? What are we ready to die for? And then let's live for it. Let's live for it. Instead of, you know, anybody, anybody you know is ready to die for their career? No, but yet people live for their career. They're ready to miss weddings and miss uh, family get-togethers and miss birthdays and miss whatever it is because of their career. Because, but is that what what they're ready to die for? No. And then it, when when time comes and we need to, you know, pass on to the next world, the question is always one second: Did I fulfill what I wanted to? No, I wanted to spend more time with my family. I wanted to do more things. That are, right. So fear is not to make a person. Be in 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 uh, in in in, fr in fright, but rather for one to be living with purpose, with perspective, and that's the goal. It's to empower us to say, you know what? Yes, spending time with my children and going out to eat with my wife and 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 doing and even going on vacation. Going on vacation could be a very purposeful, meaningful experience. Yes, we're going, and this is a mitzvah for us to go out and stop working now so we can rejuvenate our energy energies and to get and to get back to work with the, with the greater. So it's not a waste of time. On the contrary, it's there for a purpose. So if a person has the proper fear, everything falls into place. And that's the goal. The goal of this trait is not to limit us, but rather to energize us to accomplish so much more when we know, you know what, I'm doing the right thing. I'm spending the time where I need to spend it. I'm Right now I'm spending time with my child, with my spouse, with my parents. This is the mitzvah that I need to be doing now. And that is the, the you know, I'll just share with you an amazing story. My grandfather, when he was learning in the Mir Yeshiva in Poland, he was one of the younger students uh, in the Yeshiva. And very interestingly, in the middle of Yom Kippur davening, someone came over to my grandfather and said, are you aware that so-and-so is sick? He's not feeling well. Okay, so my grandfather said, okay, I know that. I, I know that. He says, did you go visit him? He says, what, right now? Like right before Musaf? Right before the, the, the peak prayer of Yom Kippur? So... The, the other student says to my grandfather, an older student, he says, what are you talking about? He says, this is the mitzvah of the day, is to go take care of your fellow man. Okay. My grandfather didn't know what to do, so he decided he's going to go. He's going to go visit the sick student. He goes there, and who was there? Who was there visiting the student? All of the, all of the leaders of the yeshiva were standing at the bedside of this student, and they all acknowledged when my grandfather came in that this was the right thing to do. Right now, your mitzvah is to visit the sick person. That's your mitzvah. Sometimes we don't know what the right thing, the wrong thing, and that's what fear is, is to put it into perspective. What does the Almighty want us to do? What does the Almighty want me to do right now? If this is what the Almighty wants, to do, wants me to do, I don't care what people say. I don't care what my neighbors will say. I don't care. This is the right thing for me to do. When we are able to harness this trait of perspective of year up, then we know we know we're on the right path and that's the goal it's it's a lifelong uh, it's a lifelong trait to attain to always have the right perspective wherever we are in every situation right when we're in synagogue for example that's why we have that sign at the entrance of the synagogue always know before whom you stand because when we're in synagogue we shouldn't be schmoozing with friends we shouldn't be catching up on, 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 on the latest uh, synagogue politics. We should, that's not the time. It's not the place. Right now we're standing in front of the Almighty. After when we go to Kiddush, then we can schmooze about other things, right? But there has to be a right time and right place for everything. I'm just looking at us on the screen. I see you're in white and I'm in red. I like thinking of, you know, angel, devil, right? All, the, all that, like, biblical wrath of, like, 
you know, heaven or you're going to hell, or right? Like, that's not what we're talking about, right? Why am I in red? Um, the, it's, it's really more of like, a, again, a fear of what's in front of you, fear of reality, fear of missing out, fear of, you know, getting to the end of your life and not, not knowing what, what there is. There's, there's in, in, uh, grew up in a, like in a lot of Jewish schools, there's always, the teachers are always saying a mushal, a mushal is a parable. There's always stories, a mushal, a, a parable, a metaphor, right? And all these stories, they usually involve a king and an island and a servant and a this and a that or a princess. Right? And a lot of them, like you hear a lot of stories on a similar theme, but, of um, you know, you're sent to some like magical island and you can like collect whatever you want there and and bring it home so like what so one of these things is like um on some a certain island like coal or dust was so so valuable but it was like an island paved in diamonds right and the story is like the guy goes there he for he gets this opportunity to go to this island and he's there and the whole time he's there his goal, right, when he went to this island, his goal was to collect all these diamonds and just diamonds like all over the all over the street, like America paved in gold. No, but this is like for real. There's like an island with with diamonds everywhere, right? And he gets to the island, and what's he doing the whole time he's on the island is he gets distracted by what everyone there is doing and what everyone's right, and everyone there is collecting uh, whatever whatever it was. Uh, what? Coconuts. Coconuts, right? So they're all collecting coconuts, and he's like the whole time he's there, he's like. Collecting coconuts, 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 and he has like this amazing coconut collection, right? And then you know it's time for his ship to go back back home, and he collects all these coconuts and he brings it home, right? And and he gets home and his his wife is like, you know, like I missed you, nice to see you, and like where's the diamonds? And he's like, look what I got. You don't understand how valuable these are. And she's like, and obviously, right? What's the uh, the nim show as it's right the the uh, What's the word for nimshal? Mushal is the parable. Nimshal is like the, the, lesson. the lesson. So what's the lesson, right? We go through our lives, right? Our soul, we're put in this world. We have a goal. We know what's important. Our soul comes to this earth, knows, knows exactly what it's supposed to do, right? But we get distracted. We get caught up in like this world of, it's a false world. And we get distracted in, in so many things and we're just collecting coconuts and we get to the end of our lives and we're like, we need to uh, think about what we want to collect and what, what we're here in the world for. So it, there's a very interesting thing. If it, it, mm-hmm. uh, you're sure um, we can identify, you know, when a baby is born, the baby cries. The first thing it does, it cries. Why does it cry? Why does it cry? So our sages tell us that when a baby is born, it does not want to be here. Because till now, it, the baby was living in a world of all spirituality, all closeness and relationship to Hashem. There was like no challenges. Everything was great. Suddenly, you're taking this heavenly soul and putting it into a physical body. And it doesn't want to be here. It says, bring me back to my spiritual world. Bring me back to my spirit. And we try to calm the baby down. Oh, cute baby. We give the baby a balloon and we give the baby toys. And to get a little older, we can buy them dolls or cars. Or right, and we try to give them gifts and make it keep them happy. Just, just be fine with your situation here. But the truth is, is that that soul never stops yearning. That soul never stops desiring spirituality and connection. And that's what we're trying to attain in this world. We're trying to attain that spirituality that pleases the soul. And that's the fear. The fear is what happens if I just invest in my physical. I have the nice car, I have the nice house, I have the nice jewelry and the nice furniture and all the all of the luxuries of the world, but I neglect it to care for my soul that's here for spirituality. That's a terrible fear. That's why on, on, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, part of our prayer is V'chein ten pachtacha. Please place your fear. What type of fear? The fear of heaven on me. Because once we have the fear of heaven, all of the other little insignificant fears fall away. You know, we have fears of uh, we have to make a, a house payment, we have to make a car payment, we have to make the insurance payment. We have all of these different fears. But when we have that main fear, the fear of heaven, all of the other fears disappear. 
right? It's like if God forbid someone gets diagnosed, they don't care about the small, you know, with, with some severe, God forbid, a severe illness, right? If suddenly the little worries, the small little issues they have with their neighbor and with the fence and with the this, all those issues fall aside because now they have something which is real, something which is big that knocks out all of the minor insignificant fears. And that's what we ask for in Yom Kippur. We say we want to have the true fear of heaven upon us, not the fear of small things. All right. That's the goal here. We, um, I, well, really, the, the goal for this class is to be more interactive. Hopefully, soon we can do this in person. Um, but, can I translate? Can, we, can, we un, can I just ask everyone, or unmute your, can they unmute yeah, themselves? They unmute themselves? Okay, unmute yourself. Like, why do you think, why are people so afraid of fear? We're, we're, we're going to discuss a little, like, why fear is really a good thing. So, what are people afraid of with fear? While everyone's unmuting and asking, I just want to share with you one idea. The Talmud says that the reason for fear is fear of missing out the opportunities of life. Like you said, FOMO of life. Right? Imagine if a person um, had the opportunity to write a book and didn't write that book. Someone else ended up writing that book. Right? Imagine if you had the opportunity to go someplace and see and go on, right? And then you miss out on that opportunity. Right? What if life was one big opportunity that was neglected? Mm -hmm. That's the fear one should have. Okay, any questions? So Let what are we afraid of fearing for? Bobby? Well, I was just thinking when you were talking about this, that there's a country western song that I just love. It's um, uh, live your life like you're dying. That, like you're yeah. dying. And yeah. I mean, it, it sounds terrible, but when you listen to the words, it it's so true because I think, you know, you're, you don't want to do this because you think maybe like the rabbi said, you know, uh, you know somebody will think you're, you, you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. You don't, you have to stop living for the fear of, of what is right or wrong, but what's right for yourself. And I think a lot of us, as you get older, you think, uh, I don't care anymore. I'm going to do what's good for me. I'm not going to worry about what somebody thinks about whether, you know, oh, well, she's all of a sudden, you know, she's this goody goody. She's doing all these classes and trying to learn or whatever. But, you know, I think you finally just decide if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. But I think the point is that I think in our society, people are mostly a lot afraid or fear of what other people think of them. And sure. I think what, the more you learn, the more you read and study, you know that your family troubles started years ago at the beginning of mankind. It has nothing to, you know, everybody's got their own sores. So, you know, I don't know. For sure. Give me like, here, like, give me a word or two that explain or a, a sentence why people, what people are afraid of embracing fear. I think for me, I don't know if, can you hear me? I've got headphones yeah. in. Hi, Katya. Hi, Zahava. Hi, Rabbi. Um, I think people are super afraid. I mean, I don't know, in, in California, for sure, people are very afraid. FOMO is a very Katya real Houston thing. from California. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Houston. Move. Thank you. Um, I guess like people are just afraid that they're so like they they're attaching themselves to others because they don't want to miss anything but in attaching themselves to others they miss out on a lot of opportunities for themselves i don't know if that makes yeah any sense sure. people want validation from other people and therefore are ready to compromise their own pursuits just to exactly. get the validation that other people want exactly to and i'm definitely guilty of that i'm sure everybody's guilty of that but that's a very big thing in California, especially in LA, more so than in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Linda, you were gonna say something? Yeah, um, for me, I think it's that one day seems to blend into the next. And I think that my fear is that suddenly I'm gonna find myself old 
and I'm going to ask myself, what did I accomplish in my life? And what could I have done differently to have been a better member of society, more helpful to people? You know, what, what mitzvahs could I have done that I didn't do? And so I think for me, that's kind of what it is. It's just that one day just waking up and finding out, gee, there's so much more I could have done that I did not do. Yeah, I'm sure. So all, I mean, these are Renee. all great. Well, Renee. Oh, Renee. Yeah, just, just, um, this one's a tough one for me to say. Um, I am fearful that I will not use the gifts, and there are many that God has given me. And that one's tough. Absolutely. Imagine if God made, created someone with a tremendous gift to write music, and they never, ever explored that, uh, that talent, that gift. Or if someone to become a great writer, a great orator, um, a, a, great, a great chef. Right? All of these skills and talents, be, be, you know, there, there's so many unbelievable gifts that God gives us, and we have to identify what they are, right, and then explore them further and, and take them take them to the next level, and not to sell ourselves cheap and say, oh, my parents don't want me to be that; they want me to become a doctor or a lawyer, right, or the classic, you know, the classic uh, Jewish, uh, right, and and, um, and and instead of really pursuing our passions and and the things that that perhaps are gifts that we might be neglecting. Okay, so these are all, okay, so those were all very, uh, very, very good examples. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, I think that a lot of that, like what I was saying, that, that really pretty much what everyone's saying is that we don't want to get to the end of the world. We don't want to get there with these like collecting coconuts. And not not focus it, you know. Like my my daughter and her friends, they're talking about the they're doing uh, Black Friday last year. They're like talking about it forever. They're they're going and they're gonna go shopping and they're doing, and they talking about it for so long. And they went there and they stayed out the whole night and they camped out for hours. And they're right. Mir didn't even go. I don't think my daughter even went with them. Her, this was her friends having this conversation, and. They, they're pushing, I mean, look, you're literally putting your life in danger, some of these stores, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they, and they're going crazy just to like, get these amazing deals. And when she, one of her friends, I'm like, so what'd you get? And she's like, I got a really cute t-shirt. I'm like, awesome. Like, you know, that's amazing. I'm so glad you did that. Right. We, that's what we're doing. Like, I see it, you see all these like Facebook posts, you know, if someone post a friend posted something. Uh, if you could have these like nine dream things you could have in your home, right? You could pick a, it's in your master bedroom. You pick three of them. So one's like a music room, one's a pool and a bar, one's a private beach, one's a movie theater, one's whatever, right? There's like all these t different types of posts. Pick three. What would you want? And I think really each of us in our lives, we're each picking three things or picking whatever things that we think that we could get in this world. We could get everything. I'm saying you can't, obviously you have to choose and make priorities and, but people think that we're limited. We're, there's so much in the world for us to get. There's so much here that, and we're, we're our own worst enemy. We just hold ourselves back from achieving what we can in this world. And I think that a big part of that is we're just, we're afraid. We're afraid. And, but what we're trying to also explain is fear is a good thing. Right? So we're, it we're, should be empowering. Right. What we're, we're, we're saying is people are afraid, but there is good fear. And what we're trying to explain is the good fear. And I think there's a couple of reasons why people are afraid to be afraid. So number one, people are like, it's painful. I don't, I, I don't want to be afraid. Being afraid is, is scary, right? Like I'm putting myself, right? You have people who will spend who knows how much money to like go to these like haunted houses, you know? That, that's weird to me. I don't get it. Or like why they'll pay money to go to like a theater and watch these like really scary horror movies or pay good money to jump out of the airplane. That one makes sense. That one makes a lot of sense. That's like a good fear. But like 
people will pay money and and to to scare themselves. Why? Because it's like this adrenaline adrenaline rush, right? So people are afraid of fear because they think it's painful, but fear is not painful, right? Fear can push us to do things that we'd otherwise not do or afraid to do, right? Um, um, any, any one of us can pick something that we're afraid of, but given the proper motivation, right? You have all these like reality shows, to, right? Survivor and the biggest loser, right? So no one wants to like lose 250 pounds, right? Someone's really needs to lose the weight, but you give them a million dollars. You say you're, if you, if you, um, you know, the biggest, the biggest loser will win. I don't know what this, let's say like a million dollars, right? So suddenly people are motivated their fears, right? All of a sudden you can do something and you feel good about yourself. And really it's not fear. It's not fear. It's like this adrenaline rush to help you achieve something great. So that I think is like one of them is we're afraid to be afraid because it's scary. One is another one is right. You feel like it, like another one is similar. It's like, you feel like you're paralyzed. Like it's just, you're so scared. You like can't do something. But when we're afraid, you know, these crazy stories of like, uh, God forbid a mother, like her toddler stuck on their car, you know, she'll like lift the whole car. Right. Cause when you have this fear, you get this adre adrenaline. It doesn't paralyze you. It gives you extra strength. We get more strength when we're afraid. So we just have to, if we're motivated to do something, it could actually be like liberating. You could do stuff that you're, you're not able to do normally, but all of a sudden you're afraid of. So then now you could do it. Um, another one was you're afraid because like um, you're afraid of someone's taking away your freedom, right? No one wants to be told what to do. So we're afraid like we want to, everyone wants to be in control. So when we're, when we're afraid we're losing our control, that's like a fear. You don't want to lose that control. But if we give in to like a little bit, a little bit losing that control, really it's the ultimate control. Really that's like the ultimate in, in, uh, in freedom. I want to share with you an amazing story that I heard from Rabbi Pesach Kron. He said, you know, Rabbi Pesach Kron wrote a book uh, which really put him on the map, so to speak, as being a, 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 a great speaker and a great writer. He wrote many, many books subsequent to that. Uh, but the first one he wrote was about the bris mila and um, about the, the covenant that every eight-day-old boy, male, has. You know, it's a really an amazing experience, and he's a mohel uh, for many generations, so he wrote this book about the bris. And it's really an amazing book. It's published by Art Scroll. And one time he said in one of his lectures that he walked into an event and he met a person. The person says to him, you know something? I was supposed to write that book. Right? And he said the amount of regret that he heard in his voice was a regret that he probably never lets go of. Right? And sometimes we have to, we have to consider that it's not a good life to live when we're always living with regret. It's not a good, it's not a good feeling. It's not a pleasant feeling. But if a person fears missing out, then they'll jump on every opportunity. You know that they say that 90% of leadership is just showing up, right? You, you don't, don't miss opportunities because who knows what can happen. You just stay home. You might miss those opportunities. If you don't, you know, invest a little bit in getting out of our comfort zones, then we can potentially fall out of touch with what is really important to us. And uh, that's what's one of the things that when we, again, when we talk of fear is not to limit ourselves. There are two questions here. Uh, Hannah, what's, you, you can unmute yourself, please. And you have to unmute, unmute. Now you can hear me? Yes, I hear you, yes. Ah, okay. So I think also people are afraid. Oh, they have the fear of the unknown. When you don't know what's going to happen, you, you have fear. But I think that the best thing to describe this fear that you guys are talking about is that fear, it's ira mitoch kavod. And I think the best solution to that kind of fear, in quotation mark, is to turn this field to ma'asim, to good deed, 
the maasim will turn that fear to something product, productivity. What? Mashu tov shitze mize maasim tovim. Something so, so good that will come out. It will be a motivator, is what you're right. saying, right? And I, and we, right. You know, that will motivate you to turn this fear, not to live with fear. Oh, I'm, I have fear. Take this fear and change it to deeds, to masim to vim, to help your neighbor. Fear into action. Action, video. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Right. That, that's and that that's the goal. Rene, you you wanted to say something? You can unmute yourself. Oh, like, I didn't. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, though. Um, okay, so let's continue. Um, it, it, it's so the, the focus really needs to be the focus on on truth, on knowing purpose, meaning. Why are we here? Uh, what do we need to accomplish before our lease is up on life? Um, it's an amazing thing our sages teach us that our children don't belong to us. Our children are a lease where God gives us our children to bring out the best in them. They have their, you know, it's like what the great parenting uh, uh, educators. One of the things that they say is that um, you can't make your children, your children's problems, your problems, right? Because it's their problem. You can't help them if you make it your problem. If you really want to help them, you have to know that it's their problem, that you're there to assist them and help guide them. And I think it puts it into perspective of what really parenting is, is that many times we make our children's problems our problems, right? A child who has uh, disciplinary issues, a child who has uh, learning issues, it's their problem. And, and, and to be there to assist them. Now, what's the purpose of, 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 of mentioning this? The idea is like this, is that when we recognize that our job as parents is to help our children become the best they can be, then it takes out that fear of like, what happens if my son doesn't end up becoming a doctor? What happens if many times we have certain aspirations for our children that are really not our children's aspirations? They're not their talents. They're not their skills, right? They're not what they were, they were gifted with. So we're trying to force on our children something that's not really them. And that's, that could be a terrible thing if parents force their children to do something which really doesn't represent who they are. And that's a, a very important, you know, there, there are many stories, there are many stories of people who had near-death experiences. And they, they, they felt their souls, de, you know, departing their body. And their soul was hovering over their body and they saw the, the medics, you know, taking care of them and trying to resuscitate them. And, that, you know, they, they talk about going into this, this, uh, this tunnel and there was this light at the end of it. a whole, you know, incredible story, just like many of the tales that we heard. There are many, if you'd like to see videos about people giving their testimonials of their near, near death experiences. But what every single one said is that they didn't want to go. They didn't want to go. Why? because they felt they didn't finish their mission yet on this world. We want to go back. We have to go back. We have work we need to do. We have things we need to finish up that we didn't finish up that we now realize we wasted our time with other things. And it's such an important thing for us to really stop and think, why did God give me as an individual all of the talents, the abilities, the skills, the limitations, the spouse, the children, the parents, the background, the, the friends, why did God give me my special world? What did he want me to accomplish? He wanted me to do something. He wouldn't have given me the circumstances that I have had he not wanted me to, to fulfill a specific task. And that's something that we all need to identify within ourselves. Why did God give me my life? There needs to be a reason that, that I have what I have. God wants me to do something special with it. Now go get him. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything get in your way. And that's what fear is supposed to be empowering in that way that we know what we're here for and nothing can stop us. And we're, we, we keep that motivation because we know, hey, that's the purpose of my living. That's the reason I'm in this world. And once we know that, we also know that there's a very, very powerful God who's right behind us going to be helping us, holding us the whole way 
helping us attain these goals and accomplishing our missions. You say like there's a you're saying now there's a God behind us, right? I think that a lot of people with this fear thing think that um, we saying like heaven, hell, right? So like you know if you're like driving and all of a sudden you see a, a cop car behind you. So my heart, anytime like I see a a, a cop like anywhere near me, my <laughs> heart all of a sudden is like right like. And even I'm I'm driving normally. I'm driving fine. They're 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 either just driving to get themselves coffee or they're going to find you know the bad guy, right? But like they're doing their own thing. But I see a and all of a sudden I'm like extra careful. I'm driving like a you know my grandmother and like the blinkers on like you know and like I'm so careful, right? Because there's like this cop car. Like God forbid he should see me like you know not stop 50 feet, whatever, right? So that's not what we're talking about with, with Hashem. We're not talking about God, like that we're always scared. He's watching us and, and he's going to punish us if we do something wrong. It, it's Of course, we're supposed to live with this fear that there is God, there is Hashem, there is, and, and all these things in the world, the fact that, uh, you know, they say that, like the fact that we have cameras everywhere, right? And and the recording, everything that's going on, these, these are things that help us understand a little bit what god is capable of right like there's there's cameras that could see you and doing everything and know everything going around god knows a lot more that what's going on in your life and for real right so there is that that element of fear and and being you know wanting to do right but it's more of a fear of, of a love and a fear of you want to do right you want to do right by your parents you want your parents to be proud of you you want right it's not because you're afraid you're going to be punished it's because you want to do the right thing. And and again, these are fears that aren't supposed to limit us and hold us back and scare us. They're fears to make us, not because we're forced to do something. Sometimes fear, like um, we went to uh, we went to SeaWorld in San Antonio a few months ago. And um, let's see, where were we? Uh, the, the amusement park, Texas what's, uh, Fiesta. Texas Fiesta. Right. And my nine year old son, Yehuda, he's like the sweetest, gentle soul. Uh, he's very much like Ari. And he's afraid of these type of things and roller coasters. And his big brothers and sisters were going on these roller coasters. And he kind of was like, not kind of, he was terrified. He was absolutely terrified. But he also had this part of him. He wanted to be like his big brothers and sisters. He wanted to be cool. He wanted to do it. And I, and I was watching this like battle in him, like, should I do it? Should I not do it? And he said, yes. And he's like, no, but no, but, uh, uh, and he was like, it was so cute. And, I, and I'm like, you, you don't need to do it. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. Don't worry about it. You know? And I was trying to right? and he pushed himself and he decided he's going to do it. And I went with him and you know, like the picture afterwards, it was like, Right. And I and I are looking at it the picture afterwards and we're like, poor kid, you know, like it's like child abuse, right? But he he pushed himself. He wanted to. And that fear that he had, he took that fear and he felt so amazing afterwards, right? So I think a lot of us have these fears in life and things like, I can't do that. I can't, right? And even people, it's funny, like I was talking to someone, she like she's paying a personal trainer a lot of money every week. She pays a personal trainer and a life coach. And a, she doesn't want to think anyone's saying is so I'm like, why are you paying them? Right? So people are ready to, they really want to, they really, really want to get into shape and set goals for themselves and declutter their house and whatever, whatever their goals are, but they're like scared. They're, they're scared to push themselves. They're scared to do it. Right? So I think we have to sometimes just, do it. Just take that jump, leap, and it is scary. But that fear is not scary. Like the the fear is not scary. The it's fear, right? Like like kind of thing. It's a it's a motivator. It should help us. It should push us because it's not it's not fear to to control us. It's not fear to you know limit us. It's fear to make us be able to achieve life at its greatest. To do the most that we can. To to live the best we can live. You know, uh, Zahra gave a great example with the police officer. I was, I remember when we were once in, in school um, and, you know, sometimes the kids wouldn't exactly behave so, so wonderfully uh, with the teacher. But I remember one time the principal slipped into the room 
and he was standing in the back of the classroom and nobody realized that he was there. And the kids were doing whatever pranks they were doing, whatever interruptions they were trying to do. And suddenly the principal, you know, hit the back wall and everyone turned around. And suddenly there was this fear and it was like, like, oh my goodness, everything we just did was being visible to the eyes of the principal. Everything was being recorded. He knows exactly who's who and what's what. And imagine we live life with such a perspective, understanding that the Almighty is right there. He sees everything, right? Suddenly, there may be some things we wouldn't say. Something, that, there might be some places we might not go. There are things that we may not do if we have that perspective, right? Just having that perspective. Bobby, you had something you wanted to share. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I never want to look back on my life and say I wished I would have. I always want to be proactive. And um, that I think that's something that's important to me. And I don't want to have that fear in me that I haven't done something that I, I want to do. I don't want to look back and say, like the trip to Israel, Sahaba. I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to go. And you know, I would have shot myself. And it was awesome. <laughs> anyway, that's what I wanted no, to say. I think that a lot of people, right, like like Bobby's saying, either they wait till they're, um, well, Bobby's so young still, but some people <laughs> wait. Till you're my age. <laughs> yeah. Some people wait till they're older and I should have, or wait, like get a medical diagnosis and they're like, oh my goodness, or uh, they're threatened by a, uh, by a, uh, by an employee like if you don't step it up you're going to lose your job or a spouse or in a relationship you know someone says you know this is not working out i think we're gonna we need to get a divorce or and like all of a sudden like oh whoa we need to work on stuff but we wait until like things get bad or until things like it's almost too late or to, to start working on things i think it's so important for us to realize what opportunities we have every single day Every single day live with that. I don't want to miss out on today. I don't want to miss out on everything. And you should always be living with a life with purpose. Feel And, and a lot of times people do have a, a life of purpose and they don't even realize it. I think like a lot of, you know, um, this is a big problem with, like with, with women who are on this call, right? Like women in general have a, right? If they're, if they're stay-at-home mom, Sometimes they feel like, oh, I'm not accomplishing anything. I'm not doing anything because I'm just staying home with my kids. So I'm not accomplishing great things in my life. No, staying home with your kids is an amazing, amazing thing. And that is, you are accomplishing great things. You could do more, you could add more. But like, we have to realize, and if, and if you're not working, you know, and if you're not home with your kids, so the opposite. Women are always like giving themselves like this terrible guilt complex, right? But we have to maximize the time that we have not to live with regret and to always look for opportunities to embrace. Uh, I'm preaching to the, to myself here because we're all afraid to, to take on new things and accept, right. Um, but a lot of times when you take something on and you're like, I, I can't do that, but then you do it and you're like, you can't imagine why you never did right afterwards. It's, not, it's so obvious, right? You, you see it, right? That's, that's exactly what the word year up fear seeing raa to see. Right, vision is twenty twenty. We 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 afterwards it's so easy to like say I should have, I could have, or I knew, or this or right. But we don't want to live with that. We want to be able to envision, see our lives, and see the potential, and and live up to that. You know, fear is fear is a uh, is an exercise in free will, right? We all have things that we we fear. And we can utilize that fear to express our free will to go mm -hmm. against the things that others might think we aren't capable of and, and, and do it. You know, fear helps you do what's right, not what society thinks is right. Um, it says... Well, what, what you're saying with fear is the ultimate of free will. That's, it says... Uh, it says Hakol bidei shamayim chutz miyirat shamayim. That everything is in the hands... We, we have control, um, everything's in God's control, except for fear of God, right? Fear of God is in our hands, because if if God forced us to do things, then it doesn't count. The whole idea of us having this free will 
having that fear, but being, but we have, we make our own choices, right? Like for the, the example I gave with Yehuda before, if, if I had forced him to go onto that roller coaster, he wouldn't have felt good about it. He would have just been terrified and, and just never, you know, like it would have been a horrible experience for him, traumatic, right? But he makes the decision himself, right? And he embraced that fear and he did it. So it was a great feeling for him. If we, we have to live our lives and we decide we, God controls everything, everything, everything is in the hands of God, except for fear of God. That is up to us. That's, that's our decision. So it's our decision. It's our right to, to have this fear. So it, the Talmud records an amazing story that one of the, um, one of the great sages was at a wedding. And they were so overjoyed and so happy, he took a glass and broke the glass, right? A very expensive glass. And our sages say that that's the reason we break glass at the wedding. Why did he break the glass? He said because there was an, there was an imbalance of joy. There wasn't enough fear. There wasn't enough presence of mind. It was just overjoy and there was no balance to that joy. And he says, the Talmud says that every aspect of Judaism is about balance, right? Particularly when we talk about happiness, happiness is a very powerful, it's, it's one of the greatest things. You know, it says that the, the presence mm -hmm. of the Almighty, the Shekinah, does not reside in a place where there isn't joy. Right? You have to have happiness. You have to have joy. Otherwise, there's no place for God's presence to rest on. But too much joy without having that balance of fear or perspective is not either good, right? So there has to be a balance. And he broke the glass to get people into perspective. You're right. It's great to be happy. It's great to have that joy. It's great to have that celebration. But it must be with the balance. Until this very day, we know we break that glass, right? Our sages tell us it's also because of that. To keep a balance, right? To keep a perspective. It's great to have that joy. It's great to have that happiness, but not out of control, not out of proportion. The, uh, additionally, we see that there's also a concept of uh, a fear of our sages, right? Understanding the greatness of their knowledge and the limitedness of our knowledge. You know, when I go to my rabbi and I sit by my rabbi in Jerusalem, um, I know, Bobby, you had the privilege to meet my rabbi when you were in Israel with Sahaba. And uh, many, many of the participants who were with me in Israel, I brought them in. And we had a, we had a wonderful meeting. And I feel, I feel so, you know, elevated when I'm close to my rabbi, but I also feel, feel so small. And the reason I feel small is because, I mean, his knowledge of all of Torah, all of, all of, all of, uh, um, all of Tanakh, the, the prophets, the writings, knowing all of Mishnah and all of Talmud and all of Shulchan Aruch and all all of Rambam and all of I mean it's, it's like it's like wow it's like unbelievable, right? So if such a person were to give me advice, right, you better believe I'll take his advice because you know this is a man who's not just giving advice out of his you know just you know throwing out advice. It's coming with so much wisdom and so much knowledge and so much. Uh, you know, th there's there's so much behind what he's saying that to me it's just like it's it's a very different it, it's a very different experience than just you know getting a piece of advice from from some random stranger. But that's why I say to say have fear. There has to be a fear and a and an awe of the of the greatness of our sages, right? Because you're not dealing. It's like when I brought my children in to meet my rabbi. Uh, my children, when we left the room, I said, Nusa, what do you think? They're like, they said the same exact thing. Both of my sons who were there, they said, I literally have never seen such a happy person in my life, right? Because he just radiates happiness. And that's what comes with having, A, that relationship with Hashem, that knowledge, and that fear of, of understanding the purpose of life. And when someone is fulfilling their purpose every single day, there's no reason not to be happy. Okay? So it's just... And but when you live with that fear, the fear, right? People misunderstand it. But when we live with that fear, you're not living in fear. You're living happy and you're living relaxed. Because when you, like you said before, when you have fear in God, then you lose the fear over everything else because you realize that he's in control and all the other things 
will work out however they're supposed to right everything's in perspective so if we do have that fear of god i think part of why people are afraid to fear right like i was saying i went through like like a list of why we're afraid to fear we're afraid to lose control we're afraid to like all all these other things right i think if we know that we like let go if we have that fear you're at the same time like letting go so you're just like so we need to we need to ask ourselves the, uh, a couple of questions. Number one is what if my life is spent only seeking futile pleasures? Right? What if I if I spent my life just seeking futile pleasures? Right? It could be right, who who may not fall into that category? Right? Who in the world doesn't say you know what I'm I'm looking for something exciting something something to just you know fill up a pleasure. Uh, n- niche that I'm that I'm searching for. What role am I supposed to be fulfilling during my lifetime that I may not be fulfilling? All right. And number three is maybe I'm focused on the wrong things in life. Maybe I am, and it's a very good question to ask. By the way, you know we talked about this. Uh, people should previously in one of the previous classes. You know, many people we talk about a world which is polarized politically, right? Why do we believe certain things in our politics? And, and it's something to put it, put it on the table as to why. Why do we believe certain things? Why do we vote a certain way? Why do we like or dislike certain candidates? And to really identify what is the, what is the, the, the process behind it? What is the, me, the reasons behind it? And not to be afraid. Some people are like, what? How can you even ask that question? No, 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 no. Ask the question. Go through the process. Don't just be... The, the goal in fear is not to live like a robot. The goal in fear is to live with a purpose. That is the goal. And when we live with that purpose, and we don't live out of habit, we don't live out of just, you know, uh, 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 out of rote, then life has meaning, and life has direction, and life has fulfillment. Okay, I want to. I want to just. Um, with fear, you can feel the thrill of life one hundred percent of the time, and that is what our sages wanted. Our sages, when they put fear as one of the forty-eight tools for for a, a magnificent life, they used it because we in Judaism believe in every minute being a minute of pleasure, every second being a second of pleasure. And that's the thrill of life is when you have fear, when you have perspective, you know exactly what you're meant to do, what you're not meant to do. You know, the Torah says, the karata is Shabbat Oneg. You should call Shabbat an Oneg. And Oneg is a pleasure, a great, great pleasure. Shabbos is supposed to be called an Oneg, a joy, a pleasure. But you know, the same letters for Oneg is the letter for Nega, which means a plague. The same exact letters. You just move the ayin from the front to the back. And it becomes from an oneg to a nega. It's unbelievable. Our sages say, what changed the ayin? What is the ayin? The letter ayin also means the eye. You changed perspective. The same thing that is meant to be such an incredible pleasure can become a plague if we don't have the right perspective. And that is the, the goal in life is to have the right perspective on things. Where is our eye in? Where is our eye? Is our eye in the right place and therefore things become a pleasure? Mm-hmm. Or is the eye in the wrong place and now perhaps it becomes mm-hmm. a plague, which is, uh, you know, a, a, it's a headache. It's, it's a, nu- a nuisance. It's it, right. I, all the things I can't do on Shabbos or is it? an oneg, or is it a pleasure and a joy? That depends on our perspective. And that's the goal of this trait of fear, is to put things into the proper perspective. So when we live with fear, we live with courage, and we live with determination, right? It is the realization of our mortality. When we live with fear, we realize everything comes into perspective suddenly. Wow. I may have gone way off course, right? But now I had this miracle happen to me. I want to focus my life on the right thing, on, on the on the right path and put, and put put things 
That's the goal of life. The goal of life is to have the right perspective so that every minute is lived to its fullest. Right? All right, so that concludes uh, the sixth installment of the 48 Ways, and hopefully next week uh, we have a, a remarkable uh, next topic of humility that comes into play, and that is really, really a great uh, supercharge for life, is knowing knowing now that we have, well, we have perspective, hopefully we have a week to work on perspective, next week we put that perspective into, into practice by knowing our right place knowing exactly where we stand. So if there are any questions, we'll take the questions. To our friends who are watching us on Facebook, thank you so much for watching us. Um, and please like and share these videos. And uh, we're gonna go off of Facebook now and we'll resume only on the, on the Torch Zoom class. Uh, for those of you who are online, you can always join all of the Torch classes at torchzoom.com. And again, to our friends on Facebook, we're signing off, thank you so much. Have a terrific day.